Right, today in a box, what do we got? We have, in a rather big box, rather nice, this is the twin Trinity Quantum. So this is the Trinity F9. It is huge. So inside we have the Trinity. We have the how-tos. And then we have all the good stuff. So right, so building the Trinity. First of all, we're going to take the main body. Very careful, do not touch here. Our payload is the A7R, the Sony, underneath. It is this is this one is the 42 megapixel in this one. So that's our main body. We'll just put that there. Next, we can then come and get our. We're going to take this part of the box out because we need a tail section, which is here. This is our tail. So put that into there. Just, oh, I say this, it will go. <laughs> oh, carbon. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got the connector, line it all up, push together, clicks in. Release button is here and here, so you can release it. That's that. I've got the tail piece, getting it in the right way. Right, so it goes uh -huh, that way, hold down, click into place. Make sure that's well locked in. Okay, and then finally, we just need a battery. So I'll take this one. This is number one as well, which is quite handy. Uh, go back in your box. And then take off the connector, turn it upside down. And then we can just slide the battery in. Ready. And that's the Trinity's main body assembled. We then we need a wing. The wings are here, so the Trinity have done. They've actually changed the design on the on the Trinity wing. It used to be more clipped, it used to come up more like a glider. Problem was when you come into land the wind hits, it's getting under and lifting, Trinities fall over that way in a crosswind. So very simple. Just clicks in. Button to release the wing again if you want to. And then we've got the other side. Just connect the other wing in. And that's it clips in it looks very nice it's about 2.2 meter wingspan flies for like I say an hour on the batteries and, and that's it assembled almost ready to go now right time for some laptop programming and sorting out right so all the stuff in the box the main transmitter control transmitter it's a multiplex kit, okay? So it's a multiplex, the charge is multiplex, the airframe's probably multiplex. Um, it's come from them. It might say Trinity, but it's gonna be multiplex. Not a fan of this kind of style transmitter, but that's just me being picky. I'll show you the screen on that in a bit. We have the comms modem. So this is the little comms modem that will laptop will speak to this, to the main aircraft. We also have, now this is an interesting bit, we have a block. You power this up via USB, you lay it on the floor, and it's to get the ground reference in, to get the height and everything. So when it flies, and at the end of it, you can merge the three files, the flight, the images, and all the data in the RTK, and it makes sure it knows where absolute ground level was, where you took off from. And then it'll compare it and sort it out, um, so all your files are correct. Got loads of USB leads. Ah, now here's a really nice little bit of kit they include in. This is the ping USB for all the helicopters and planes that fly around with A B S D. A D A D S B. I always get it wrong. So this is a little detector unit for that. So it shows on the mission planning. Got all our instructions. Nice USB uh, pen to power the block. 
and that is, and it's got three batteries in it, and that's what's in the box in total. It is a nicely moulded box, um, but it is big. It's big for a reason, which we'll get into when we go take off and stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll get into why it's a big box. Right, first things first, transmitter on. Quantum systems. Is an autoplex waiting? Right, so this is now switched on. So, next, uh, the laptop is already pre programmed, just to be clear. Okay, we've already done that bit. The software is all right for programming. Um, and that's, that's my only thoughts on it. It's all right. It's like all software, got to get used to it. We are on the aircraft. Push the button. There we go. Our aircraft is now armed. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> right, back over here. What I do is connect to the aircraft. So, what I need to do is, he says. <laughs> right, so in the field, you guys couldn't see this, so. Um, just quick this was the mission we flew earlier so this is the mission planner this is q base 3d test so it tells you the imu mag speed esc pmb rx gps your satellites your adsb um your altitudes your distance your wind your meters and second i don't know why right and I find it almost a pet hate in the AV world, in the UAE, well, in in the drone world. Why are we why are we doing meters a second? Okay, every bloody weather report I watch is in miles per hour. Okay, why can't I have the wind in miles per hour? Why can't why can't I have the speed in miles per hour? Meters per second? No. When I get on a plane and I fly to America, it tells me. In miles per hour, not meters. Uh, it's becoming a real bugbear of me. Drone developers, get rid of meters per second, please. And put miles per hour in. It makes more sense. Sorry, bit of a rant there. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, we've got the flight time. We've got a total area, 12 hectares. So in 12 hectares, it, did, it would take about seven minutes for that. And it tells you the total battery I've used, about 12%. You got your right, your mission, check mission on UAV and show planning. So this was the plan we did earlier. You can see where I took off and landed from. This is it flying around. Um, yeah, uh, and you can change it all. And it's, it's, it's typical like a Google map and you can go around changing stuff and doing whatever you want. OK, so let's 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 see if I can break this. Right. So if I go to. Uh, a new mission. Yeah, I don't care about the other data. Right, so here's a field, right? So this is what we want to do. We want to do this field here. So, going to have to bear with me, guys, because even I'm a new to this. So, I'm going to add a new element. Working zone. So I'm going to draw a new area. Right, you can use KML files, use whatever you, it, it, it's quite good. So you just draw the, the dots where you want to be. Look at that, just draw around, look, come to here. Look at that. And that's it, you draw your pattern. You know, it's, you can set what resolution you want, your, you know, your GSD and everything. At the minute it's 2.6 centimetres, 100 metres high. So if you wanted a centimetre, all you got to do is come down. Right, do it. That. So if you want to put 1.3 centimetres, it's lowest flight, 50 metres. So we'll go back up a bit. There you go. If you want 1.83 centimetres per pix, 68. There you go, look. Brings up a little thing that you can play with, a little nice little box. One thing to note with the software on this, uh, when you update it, you've got to 
have the installer, so you have to uninstall the version you've got. Go to the now. Let me get this right. There's a. It's got its own uh, Cubase 3D documents file. Go in there and launch the installer. But you can only do it once you've deleted or installed the old version. Okay. It will not do that. The installer was a pain for me in the field for about a good hour. So we sussed that one out, and we did that. WhatsApp support by Quantum was stunning. They got straight back to us and says, this is what you do, and that was great. So the, the support was, was really good. All right. So we now can set our takeoff and landing areas. So what we do is you say, because this is where we fly from, we can fly from here, and it shows you the route it's going to take. So it's going to take off, fly out that way, go around here and along here. When it comes back, it comes around, flies here. Now, the takeoff height and everything, so you can choose what you want. Okay, I'm going to recommend, guys, 10 meters to 8 meters. That's what you want. 8 meters takeoff transition. Okay, now, your transition cone is very important. So that just here, there's some green. You can't see it very well because it's a big green arrow, but beneath that is a green section. That's the wind. You must take off and land into wind with any fixed wing or VTOL aircraft. You should not be taking off with the wind at 90 degrees to you or landing at 90 degrees. If you do, you're going to have an accident. Okay? And that's basically it. That's all you've got to do. That's draw, that's, you've just got to finish your element here. So every time you add something, it's called an element, okay, on the flight thingy. And you can go in, like, you can change, you can adjust the elements... There you go. It tells you your flight time, 13 hectares, and roughly how much battery you're going to use. And that is Cubase. That is for the Trinity. Okay? So that's just a quick, rough guide. Um, it can do more stuff. Um, you can set loss, link, link loss. Um, so I knew some guys, and they were flying um, in the Ukraine, and they had to change the link loss time things so they could uh, uh yeah we're just gonna click yes um they had to change the time to give it a minute um because they kept losing signal and at 30 seconds they find they've got the trinity back they didn't want it back they just wanted it to keep going but yeah so yeah again that's the that's the trinity for you a very nice bit of kit it's nice and big and visible in the air, so yeah. And that's Cubase, basic mission planning. Okay. Right. So, pre-flight check. You got press. Oh, so you got press pre-flight check. You got press arm. Arming. Right, ready to go, yes. Here she goes. Right, I tell it to take off. On the transmitter, take off, you have to push yes again. It's like windows, or oh, windows. Up she goes, you get to eight meters. And off she goes. <laughs> so. It's up at the minute flying the mission, it's up there. It's going to overfly the guys there, so we'll get abuse in a minute from the club. <laughs> I blame the mission programming! <laughs> My pet hate is um, the short USB lead you get with it. See, from the modem that talks to the drone, it's really tiny, the lead. You want a good, like, four metre one, three metres, even two would be nice. It's like 30 centimetres. Um, so, yeah. She's, she's tiny. We've got the laptop monitor and everything, so we can see what's going on. But you can see there's a tiny USB lead there that's just no good for anything. Um, it's flying right. Love just a slight bit. It's there. It's there. I knew it was there. There she is. 
Look there, she's going to do a turn again. What's interesting is your Trinity have said do not fly two of these within eight kilometres of each other. So if there's a load of these out there in the UK, I could see problems happening. Um, thankfully, there's only about three or four of them out there in the UK. But if you can't fly this one near another one, it's quite tricky. There's me and another guy I know. We've got two of these. We're both in the same area. We've got our client who wants us to do mapping with it. But the kicker will be we can't be close to each other when we're doing the jobs. We've got to be 8K away. Um, mission's going well. Battery voltage is good. So, um, the thing is with the Trinity, things to watch out for. When you set your takeoff height, you may have noticed that we don't, it didn't go very high. I've got this one set to eight meters takeoff. There's no trees, eight meters. If you have it set at 20 or 30 meters and it's too windy, it'll have a hissy fit and it basically it'll land itself because it's too windy. Anything over about 18 meters a second, don't like it. So, when it comes back to land though, you have to have 20 meters minimum and this is it coming in now and I will have to land it on the last bit so here it comes it's coming over Sit there. There she goes. over our heads she's going to do some circles to our left just in front to our left reducing its own height before it will come in and do its transition to land Go around again, slowly sinking in the circle as it comes down. Right, it's getting down to its height, it starts transition in a moment. There we go. We go around again. Oh, we're going around again. That was a bit preemptive there. There it comes. Transition in a second. There we go, Nothing to do with the software, it's all me just gently bringing it down and we're down gently. And there she goes, she shuts down. And that's really nicely put together. Um, if I was to have a niggle, um, just maybe, the, well, the, some of the software is a bit tricky and the hashing of all the images and all the data together afterwards it's not user friendly um, you have to plug into the top here on the trinity to get your data off it uh, for the images for its flight pass this little one here it's got the sunshine sensor and everything else for the red mica sense um, but it is a nice bit of kit right so the trinity f9 um, the final thoughts on it are I like it a lot it's really good if you had a lot of mapping projects or big mapping projects it's it's not a bad bit of kit at all it um, it flies nice you can't fly anything over say 16 meters a second or 16 miles an hour 80 miles an hour winds um, that what you can hear in the background by the way is an aerobatic model it looks like a edge flying behind me and yep edge so anyway 
back to the Trinity F9. Uh, fantastic bit of kit, 15k-ish. Um, if you, like I say, large mapping projects, go for it. It's worth it. It really is. It's nice. I'm not sure what the spares are like. And batteries, you're going to pay for them. The charging system for this, though, I don't like. Because the charger can only charge one of these at a time. So you can only charge one of these at a time. Um, the box can only hold three of them. But that's three hours flying in a day, which is actually fantastic. Because this covers ground. This flies at 17 metres a second. Um, so it flies a reasonable speed, which is about 34, 34-ish miles an hour. 30 miles an hour. It's a nice glider. I'm glad to see they just. I'm glad to see they changed the wingtips. That was a nice change. I was happy to see that. Um, but yeah, so that's the Trinity F9. Nice bit of kit. My only concerns are if you had other ones in the area, you don't know about it. Apparently, it can be a problem. Check with Trinity. Um, check with Quantum Sorry Systems before you before you uh, if you're going to go down that route, because it's no good if you can read or write to other ones that are in the air. So just double check me on that is my best advice. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, my, my absolute pet hate. Hang on. Oh. Right, so this is a 2.2 metre wingspan plane. That's the modem and that's the USB lead. It's maybe 30 centimetres long. And all it is, it is a... So it's printer style ones, you know, we, we, we all have printers, I should think. Um, unless it's wireless, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, what the hell? Give me a decent lead length, come on. I want two metres, really. You want two metres so you can get it up and get the antenna on the back of a car um, like I had with the EB in the other video. Because otherwise, you've got to have your laptop up on top and you can't read the screen for anything. You want to sunshade it. You've got The only way to do it is to have a decent lead. You know, if you're paying this much for one of these, this is scrimping, okay? I consider this scrimp, okay? This is just bad. Um, there you go, that's my niggle with the kit. Other than that, it does fly a treat. Yeah, like I say, if you're into big mapping projects, it's worth a look. Oh, and there is one last thing. Before I forget, the niggle is, right, landing and taking off, right? So, with these, as they do this, Props get in the way. These props are low. Um, you can land on the box because it's big enough, but I know people that take out uh, like a ply board so they can land it on a piece of ply. That's the only thing. You've got to make sure you've got somewhere where the props, when they start spinning, they start spinning because you look how close they are. Look at that. So when they start up, they're not going to hit anything because look how, look how close to the ground. You know, you've got to get, you want that. You want that clearance, so that's one to watch out for with it, okay? Got to have clearance. So something to take off from. Often enough, it's the box people use to take off from, okay? Right, so, disassemble for the Trinity, just push, it comes out. And this is what you see. Sorry, this is now being filmed on my phone. On my iPhone. See, it's, see the control surface is here, for the servo is here. Very much a bit like the EB idea. So you plug in the, 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 the connect server connection or surface control in. Okay? So yeah. That's the wing. These bits here at the end, this is where you put your LED lights, okay? So wings go back in the box. You've got to be careful with the wings, how they go back in. Okay, they go this way. You can't put them the other way. If you do, they're going to get damaged. Okay, so wings first. That's one. And we'll come around here. Again, just push on the button. And it just comes undone. Very simple. Very easy. Again, into the box. That's two wings in a box. Tail. So we'll come back down to the tail. Tail, we're just going to push it forward. Off it comes. Dead easy, and that's our elevator. Well, it's, our, it's not it's our stabilising wing goes in there. It's not an elevator. It's stabiliser. Oh, 
Then we come to the back here. Watch out which one you're pushing for. Yeah, it's both of them. So we just got to, uh, sorry, I'm going to go for a slight angle there. Sorry about that. On pull lugs. Okay. And here we have, you'll have your serial number on there. Weird connector up here. If you can see that. There you go. Weird connector, sorry, there. Where it all plugs into. It's on there as well. It is nicely made, okay? A lot of 3D printed parts by the looks of it. Plastic moulding in places where needed. It's really nice. So we get this, <coughs> take this over to a box. Uh, which way did this go? Uh -huh. So this one goes in the box this way. And that will just gently, gently. Don't force anything into a box that shouldn't need forcing. That's just how you damage stuff. And we've got our centerpiece and we took it up. You can actually, actually I'll show you this before I go anywhere. So, you can take different payloads. This is, like I say, Sony A7R. You've got a, he says, so we have a payload release down here and you can take this whole bay out. Um, the payload's not gimbalized is the only bad point. And the, well, it's the main point, one of the bad points. And the second thing I don't like, you cannot, um, have a A7 and say a red Mica sense on together. It can't take that weight, okay? Oh, look at that. Oh. In there is the quantum systems. There's the a receiver for the bits. Nice printed circuit board with airflow. And I can tell that's the transmitter receiver there because it says it is. It looks like it's the modem control actually. Very nice. And then the big battery connector. Like I say, don't like the charging on these. Um, you know, for this kind of money, give us a decent charger. It should have dual output charging. It should be able to charge two at once. Bad charging gear, I can see, is going to become my bugbear in all this. This is, is the SP sensor. Can, it's, can be knocked. Don't go around knocking it though. The tilt mechanism is really nice. So if I can get in here a bit. I don't know if we can be able to see this, but um, it's really nice. It is ultra sweet and it's belt driven. Interestingly, that in there, it, it, that is a belt, okay? It's not servo driven, these are belt driven. You can hear the servo back there, but actually it's a belt that runs to the servo, okay? And on the top, as I say, this is the data port, as I said earlier, this is where you get your mission data so you can log all your files correctly and the outputs by the way because that's what everyone wants to know about this thing are the outputs any good yes they are what i'll do is i'll try and grab a couple of images although it's going to be into a video just so you can see how good they are um yeah it, it blows everything else i've seen away from mapping to be honest you know if you think the m2 turns good or a phantom falls any good no it's not got a patch on this okay this makes them the data output makes them look bad, okay? Um, yeah, it's really, really nice. So, right. Um, and it's amazing that this, and this box is there, and there's all the guys down there with the kit as well, all right? But this is actually more expensive than all of that kit over there put together, scarily. But yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Very nice.